They can't use us like that. Remember how he said when he whittled Gideon's army down from 32,000 to 300. Now that was going against 130 some thousand enemies. So you would have thought that 32,000 would still have been a miracle. And some of us, now he may be just talking to me, but I'm just, I believe it's all of us. Some of us would get lifted up because of that 32,000. But when it comes down to 300, and remember those 300 didn't even have a weapon. They knew that it was God. All they had was a light and a picture. God wants us to begin to depend on our light and our picture. Because he told us, oh Lord Jesus, help us Lord God. She that up, oh see, I tell you the double God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Ah, you just walked in. Come here. Right here. Put your voice down. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands. She got a door. Say, I got a bat. Oh, yeah, but I got a Oh, yeah, but I got a car. She got a boat. See, I got a car. Oh, yeah, but I got a car. You did a boat. Oh, yeah, but I did a boat. Oh, yeah, but I did a boat. But I said, like picture, God said he can trust you. Oh, he said, use your light in your picture. Now, you might have missed the other part we were talking about because you just got in, but God wants us to get out of ourselves. He'll use us, but he wants us to know that it's him on the inside. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us all, help us all to recognize it's the light and the picture. We thank you, Lord God, for the anointing right now. Lord, I thank you right now. You're going to do exceeding, abundantly above all that you could ask. There's an anointing in my fingers. Exceeding, abundantly above all you can ask. And it's according to the power that works in you. That power is the light and the picture. The light of the Holy Ghost. The light of the Holy Ghost. She that are about to go. She that are about to go. She that are about to go. So cool to you that are about to go. She that are about to go. So cool to you that are about to go. Sister, I want you to recognize and know that the purpose for that picture was to cover the light until it was time for it to be exposed. See what they did, they took the picture the, 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 and they put over the light. When the horn blew, they bust the picture and the light is exposed. All at one time. All oh, this season you're going through is preparation. The light's there, but the picture just covered it right now. Just allow the Holy Ghost to do what he does. And at the right time, in the right season, at the right hour, the picture would break and the light would be exposed. Again, remember that it's not you. It's the Holy Ghost. See, he gave you the light to shine. Lord, I thank you right now. Oh, I thank you right now, Lord God. Third day miracle. Triple full faith. Oh, coming forth right now. Oh, Yabaji Kadada Baji Adara Jira Nabota. Lord, it's the anointing, Father. We thank you, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. Oh, we thank you. Right now. There it is. Oh, 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 oh. oh there's a tangible anointing. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Now, he didn't give it. He's not giving you that fire for no reason. Oh, lay hands and begin to allow the Spirit of God to use what he's put on the inside of you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord 
Confession bring possession. We've been confessing. Now it's time for us to walk in it. We've been confessing the signs and wonders and miracles. Now it's time for us to be instruments. And the way we become instruments is to lay hands. It's to walk in it. But no man has walked before, meaning you've never walked that way before. Oh, but you're doing it now. You've decided to step out of your comfort zone. Oh, Lord Jesus. You don't care if your family talks about you. You're going you're gonna to take a step of faith and allow the Holy Ghost to use you today. Oh, there's a tangible presence of the Holy Spirit, a, a tangible anointing. Oh, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I, 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 I have your way right now. We decrease. We get out of your way, Father. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Nothing's too hard for you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, in Minnesota, like, this is the first time God has ever told me that I believe, as far as I know, tell somebody this, but he told me to tell your parents they're about to enter into a new season. Tell your parents that God has seen their labor. God said he's going to confirm his word, but you got to be obedient to get it. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. They've been out with the sheep. Like David, out taking care of the sheep, playing the harp. I saw them out there. And they enjoyed doing that. They, they, it wasn't like they even wanted to be anything more than that. Just doing what God told them to do. But they got around the king and they heard things that they should not have heard. And they saw there was more that God wanted to do for them. And they saw that, just like David, they saw everybody else was afraid. <laughs> but he said, what y'all doing being afraid of him? He's an uncircumcised Philistine. We've got the anointing of God. There's no demon or devil that you can need to be afraid of. Look at who's on the inside of you. The Holy Ghost. Driving out in front of you. Just let's allow him to use us for his glory. Thank you, Lord. You know, the word says what you do in secret. What you pray for in secret. He'll reward you openly. What have you been, what have you been desiring in your secret and your private time? For God to use you. Well, there's no better time than right now. Let him. See, it's not you anyway. It's the spirit of the living God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I will step the order of him. There's no such thing as, oh, it was by chance. It was luck. When you're a child of God, you step the order of him. So every opportunity is ordained of him. Just allow him to use you. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you're so good.
very good. Give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Just make sure he's through with this part of it right now. Oh, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Shida la la bo ta kata. Shida la la bo de la shida la bo ta kata. Help us, Lord God, to hear from you like never before. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Shida la la bo ta kata. Shida la la bo de la la bo ta kata. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Shida la la de la shida la bo ta kata. Yes, Lord God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shida la baba de la kata. Shida la la de la shida la bo ta kata. You're walking in the supernatural. Most of my people, says the Spirit of God, are looking for the spectacular. But you are walking in the supernatural. The season that you're in was ordained on me, says the Spirit of God. And I have it especially just for you. So, just walk as a natural man. But you will be acting in the supernatural, above natural. Things will come normal before you. Well, that's what I desire of you. It's not a strain or it's not a struggle. It's just walking, going about your everyday task, hearing my voice and obeying. And the things of, of the supernatural will become natural occurrence. And you will not be shocked or dismayed because of the supernatural power that manifests. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to experience that supernatural, that realm you desire all of us to walk in. Oh, Jesus. Help us to hear your voice. Oh, so we can operate in that. Your word is a two-edged sword. It's not a living word. Thank you, Lord. Get your Bible. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, This Bible is God's word to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I believe what it says about me. And I obey what it says to me. Because this is my roadmap to success. All the instructions I need. Everything I need is contained in God's word. Thank you, Lord, for your personal word to me. Now, now, if you really believe that everything you needed for success is contained in God's word, you get in it. You get in it. When you were in school, if somebody told you everything on the test is going to be on these four two pages, you're going to make sure you knew if you wanted to be a good student at it, what was on those two pages. Well, I'm telling you, this is God, God's roadmap for us. We want to walk in the supernatural because we are supernatural beings. But we can't walk in the supernatural if we don't know what his word says. You can't walk in the supernatural by mimic. You, you, you can't see somebody do it and do, you mimic them. No. All of us are unique. What God has for you he has a unique way for you to do it. And it won't be the way your neighbor is doing it. Because, they, you know, they only made, he only made one, one of that person. He only needed one. 
but he depends on me to do my job. There's only one right hand in the body. Don't need another. As a matter of fact, it becomes a fruit. But if I just allow the gift that God has placed inside of me, no matter how big or how small I think it is, and give him all the praise and glory, he'll show it. And he'll show me how to walk in the supernatural. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 21. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Oh yes, 2 Samuel chapter 21. We've been talking about believing God and obeying him. Because you're not going to obey someone you don't believe. In 2 Samuel chapter 21, we'll pick it up at verse 15. 2 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 15. It says, Moreover, the Philippines had yet war again with Israel. And David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines, and David waxed faint. And Ishbi Benob, Ishbi Benob, which was of the sons of the giants, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight. He being girded with a new sword, <coughs> thought to have slain David. In other words, he was a, a, the, the, King, the new living said he was about to kill David. He had cornered him and was about to kill David. And Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, helped him, secured him, and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. Everybody say, it's time for a change. <laughs> now, we're looking at a mighty warrior. David was a mighty warrior. He had slain the giants. As a matter of fact, this giant that uh, uh, Abishai had killed, his spear weighed about half the, was about half the size of Goliath. David, as a, as a warrior, was a mighty warrior. He was used to fighting. He was used to killing and destroying and defeating the enemy. But in this instance, the Bible says, he decided to take his men to go to war again. Just like he had done in the past. But this time he got weary and tired. And the giants that he had killed before under the unction of the Holy Ghost had now cornered him. One of them had cornered him. And the Bible said it was about to kill him. Had not been for help, he would have lost his life in battle. Everybody again say it's time for change. So his men came to him and said, in essence, we know you are a mighty warrior. We know you killed Goliath. We know that you were capable back then. But it's time for change. You can't cooperate with us no more. And the reason they said that it was because you get cornered again like you did this time, then the light of Israel will be snuffed out. And we can't take that change. As I, and as I began to, to meditate on this word today, I was, you know, had planned probably, you know, was going to go in time another direction. And the Spirit of God says, in particular with me, but I believe in all of our lives, it's time for change. You cannot depend on doing what you've been doing the way you've been doing it for years. If you want to see the miracles of God, 
It's time to let go. And, uh, and, and, and Minister Ruthie was praying that. Change. So God is trying to get, a, get something to do. And it's time for change. Could be, I don't care how long you've been doing what you've been doing. Seek the face of God and say, God, how, you, how do you want me to change? David, a mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. Now, he had men around him to protect him, to do everything they need to do for him. But he just wanted to go out and fight. It's time for change. You don't have to fight the way you've been fighting before. You got help. Everybody say, I got help. Say it again, I got help. Your help is the Holy Ghost. There'll be a lot of things you won't have to do the way you've been doing it before because you got help. But you got to change. Who, who, who assisted? Who helped David kill Goliath? Did he do that in his own strength? No. So if God helped him kill the, the giant that everybody else was afraid of, I don't care what else is in his life, he won't to help him slay it. But we got to step back. And let me take my hands off of it. Yeah, I know I'm capable. Yeah, I, I know I can do this thing. I, I still feel just as young now as I did then. But because of change, because of what God has for us, I have to be ready for change. I have to be ready to step back. And all of us, we've got to be ready to maybe step aside and say, Lord, I know it's time for change. All, you need to do, all I need you to do now is just tell me how you want me to change, what you want me to do. And he'll tell you every step of the way. There's so many miracles locked up on the inside of you. Now, uh, we, didn't, we didn't go read this, but uh, when David decided that, that, that he was going to step back and be king and that his, all of his men fight, the victory was, was still there. He didn't have to be out there with them. But they got more victory then, just as many, because God was with them. Now, of course there was a season and a time he had to be there. And I think because of the season and time he was in, and he didn't recognize the time and the season had changed, he, he, was, uh, he was trying to use the same thing, he was trying to use the same natural uh, weapon. But this time he came faced with a giant that wasn't as bad as Goliath. And he thought, well, I killed Goliath. Let me see what I can do. I, this is just me saying this. This is by the scripture. I believe he, you know, he, 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 he becomes face to face with this, this, this giant again. But this time, because he did do it seeking God. He did do it the way God wanted him to do it. And then he missed God's timing. Had it not been for Abishai, had it not been for the mercy of God, the king of Israel would have been slain. Had it not been for the mercy of God, what would have happened to us? Doing things in our own strength, not recognizing change time, and uh, we begin to uh, depend on our natural ability, what we've learned, what we've read in scripture, what we've seen people do, and not recognize change time. God wants to do some change. He may ask you, he may direct you to do something that nobody else has done before. But you have to recognize the voice of God. When you recognize the voice of God, you'll begin to see the results of God. Remember, they were talking about David. They said, well, you know, David has, you know, Saul has slain his thousands, but David has what? Ten thousand. Mighty warrior. And they were saying that while he was coming back from battle. There were a lot of things that happened in David's life that got him to a point where he was the head huncher. If we're not careful, we'll depend on the accolades of people to get us, and, and, and those accolades will get us in an area or a place where we don't know where we are and how we got there and how we're going to get out. But oh my God, I recognize, and you recognize that it's time for change. And because it's time for change, you're going to step into the power of God, step into to what God has for us. And when we step in, that's when we're going to begin to, it's going to be like a new arena. I kind of saw like a, a, a little hole. And I, I, could, I could peek through the hole, and I could see a measure of what was going on on the other side. 
but until change came, I never experienced what's going on on the other side. I can see it, but I'll never experience it. God wants me and you to experience it. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's time for change. And I believe that's what God just wants us to know here in living word. That uh, if God may have blessed us in our family. May have blessed us in, on the job. May have blessed us with where we are. But that measure of blessing is nothing compared to what he wants. Let's seek his face and say, God, what more is there? I know it's time for change. I sense it's time for change. And, 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 and you all know this. You won't have to wonder. Oh, is it time for change? No, you'll, you, there'll be a, a, a sensing in the spirit realm. And you'll know that this is the season for me to step in what God has for me. And you're going to do it with trust and faith. You're going to, remember we, we're talking about walking in the season in, in the supernatural where our confession and our faith get what we need from the realm of the spirit. We're going to have to open our mouth and begin to confess and allow the faith that God has placed on the inside of us to come forth. And that gift of faith will come up. And you'll be, you, you, we talk about Jesus walking on water, you'll be walking on water. Because you'll be doing things that you thought it was impossible to do. And then your strength, on strength, it would be impossible. It was impossible. That's why Goliath laughed at David. It was impossible for David to kill Goliath with a sling, with a slingshot, with a rock. And he had all this armor, had an extra armor bearer, had a shield, and only one vulnerable spot on him. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 3. Oh, Lord Jesus. I think sometimes, listen to this. I think sometimes we can be like Goliath. We know there's a vulnerable spot in our lives, but we think there's no way for the enemy to hit that. I'm covered everywhere else. If there's a vulnerable spot and God is putting his finger on it, you better watch out for it. Oh, Lord God. During this season, I've got to get rid of all my vulnerability. And the way I do that, when God puts his finger on it, that's why he said this word is my roadmap. God will put his finger on it, and he's, he's, he'll not only tell you what it is, he'll tell you how to get rid of it. Now, the rest, of it, the rest is up to me. It's up to me to get rid of it. It's up to me to sacrifice whatever I need to sacrifice to get rid of that vulnerable spot. And you know there's some things in your life, in our lives, that, that, that we should not be doing. And this is what, let me tell you something else, too. I don't know if, this is probably gonna, not going to make sense, but <laughs> because we are not perfect, there will be a lot of things in your life that other people may see. And God will still be using it. Still using it, but all the time, he's, he's trying to keep letting you know, get, I need you to get that out. I need you to get that out. I need you to get that out. And all the times he tells you to get it out, he's still using it. Still using you to do, do miracles. And, I, and, I, and so I began, I just did a question. I said, well, Lord, what's, you know, what's the deal? He said, I want more for him. I want more for him. That's why Jesus spent all night in prayer. I thought there was more for him. Amen? But I tell you, first time you're chapter 3, I tell you, turn there. Pick it up in verse 2. Very familiar passage of scripture. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because sometimes, you know, we just need help recognizing the voice of God. And, and this, is, this is why I'm going to read this particular passage of scripture. Samuel was a young lad. And so he had to depend on the priest to initially recognize the voice of God. First, first Samuel chapter 3, verse 2. And it came to pass at that time that Eli, uh, when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see, and there uh, before the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. And the Lord called Samuel. Who called him? And he answered, here, here am I. And he ran to Eli. Now the Lord called him, called his name, but he ran to Eli. He ran to Eli because Eli was the only thing he knew. He was the closest thing to the Lord that he'd ever had any experience with. 
See, there'll be a lot of people that the closest thing they'll have the experience with to the Lord is you. So when they hear the voice of God, <coughs> they're going to say, what do you think about this? Because you are the closest thing on earth in human form that they've had. And they haven't learned yet to depend on that inward voice. So Solomon, uh, Samuel heard the voice and he ran to Eli. And, when he, uh, and he ran to Eli and said, here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call you not. Lie down. And he went and lay down. Verse 6. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not my son. Lie down again. Now, this, this priest should have been before now able to instruct Samuel before now, about the, in my opinion, about the voice of God. But because a lot of times your mentor or the people you look, the person you're looking up to is, is, is dealing with a lot of things in the flesh, they, they can't see it right now, like this. So that's why it's so, going to be so critical for us to hear the voice of God for ourselves. The Lord Call yet again. And, and uh, now Samuel, verse 7, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. He did not what? Because he was young. Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down. And it shall be, if he called thee, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. So Samuel went and lie down in his place. And the Lord came and stood. He did what? Came and stood this time. First time he said that. Came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel, twice. Then Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will what? Do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that hears shall tingle. Another way of saying this, I'm about to do a new thing. Another way of saying this, I'm about to make a change. So see, at this time, uh, Eli was a priest. Samuel was a little late. When the Spirit of God spoke this, it took a while for all to manifest. But we have to continue to confess third day miracles. We have to continue to confess what God has spoken in our lives. God, there's change in the atmosphere. There's change in the air. So it's up to me to prepare for change. Especially if God told me that's changing the air. And the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel. I will do a thing in living words. At which the ears of everybody that hear gonna tingle. But you're gonna have to be and, and if he's gonna do it in living words, you're gonna be the instrument. Now we've already Excuse me. We've already seen some measures of testimony, but there's nothing compared to what God wants to do. I believe people are going to come in here, and I know they're going to come in here off the street in wheelchairs. And because we have decreased and allowed the Holy Ghost to increase and allow God to do his new thing, not because we've seen it done that way before, it may be something we've never seen before. Something we may not know, have no idea what to do, how to do it, but we have to depend on the Holy Ghost. God is doing a new thing in living word. He's doing a new thing in your life. And he's depending on you to allow the Spirit of God to use you so the, 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 the miracle can manifest. The signs and wonders can manifest. So your third day miracle can manifest. I don't, and let me just tell you who that somebody said, you know, the first day and the second day may not look so good right now. But oh, the third day. We got, I mean, just, just, just hold on to the third day. Because the third day miracle is about to manifest. God's about to do a new thing. 
I, he was, as I was sitting in the office today, and I began to read and meditate on this, I said, thank you, Lord, for the new thing. And I thought you had been, I thought he had been doing some new things. I was, I was just glad for the testimony. I was glad, and I began to go back and just thank God for all the people that received the miracles and received the, the testimonies and, and the power of God, and I began to rejoice with him. He said, well, that's, that's, that's nothing. That is nothing. That's the you know, you, you're talking about walking in the supernatural. I'm going to show you how to walk in the supernatural. Now, you got to do what? Get out of yourself. And you got to begin to do the new thing. I can't depend on doing the things that I've seen done before, the way I've seen it done before. I can't even pray the way I've pray, seen people pray before. I can't even say the words I've seen people say before because God is doing a what? A new thing. The ears are going to tingle. Now, another way, that, another thing, another way to say that is people don't talk about you. Just, just because they ears tingle, they're, the, they're not necessarily tingling for good. But you can't allow that tingling stop you from obeying God. Not if you want, not if you want to see the reward. Verse 19, jump down to verse 19. Samuel grew. And the Lord was with him. He what? He grew. And the Lord was with him. Well, he had to be with him if he's going to use him to be doing a new thing. And, and did, did not let, let and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Oh, my God. He, he was, was a prophet. prophet. And God didn't let none of his words fall to the ground. In other words, when he spoke it, it came to pass. When a man or woman of God speak a thing, it's going to come to pass. That's why I want to admonish you to begin to decree what God said. Because, because when, 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 when you're under a prophetic anointing, you will say some things that, you, you know, uh, you, you may not normally say. You'll say it, and, and, and what you're doing, you're prophesying into the atmosphere. You're prophesying into that person's life. And you're speaking a word into their life, and under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, not one of your words is going to fall to the ground. And God told me, told me that a, lot, a while back. That's why you have to be so careful. And you can't move in this flesh. You can't operate in this flesh. Verse 20. And all Israel, from Dan even to Bathsheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Everybody in Baton Rouge knew that Living Word, was something was happening at Living Word. Because we are yielded to God, we're going to allow him to do the new thing. And the reason we have to allow him, because we don't know, it's new, we don't know what to do. I have to depend on him. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the new thing. Lord Jesus, help me to recognize and get out of your way. Because I want to see the power of God, the anointing of God. I want to see yokes destroyed and burdens removed. Lord God, we want to see, all of us, you do your new thing. And we want it to be said. Not one of our words will fall to the ground. Nothing that we petition you for will fall to the ground. Lord, I thank you right now for the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I just give you all the praise and all. I want you to put your Bible down and just stand up. And we, I want you to just begin to worship God now and thank him for the new thing. You don't know what it is, but you're ready for it. You're tired of going on the merry-go-round. You're tired of being that little hamster that's just walking around on that wheel. You're ready to get out. You're ready. You want more than just activity. You want results. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm ready for the new thing. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm ready, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, I'm ever so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. I thank you for what you're doing, Lord. I thank you for this word. Lord, I thank you right now, Lord God, as I decrease. I thank you right now, Lord God, that we are recognizing your voice. And we are depending on you, Holy Spirit. Not one word will fall to the ground. Lord God, as we come in prayer, as we come in intercession, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, oh, for showing yourself mighty. Oh, Lord God, we are so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. Oh, for the new thing, the new thing, the new thing. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. If you're in this house today, oh, for a tangible anointing. 
hata, and you have infirmity in your body. I need you to come up. God's going to heal you right now. This is going to be the beginning of a new thing. And God's going to do it the way he wants to do it. Amen? Hallelujah. And as you begin to kata kata, as you pray in the Holy Ghost, we want to pray for Pastor Marvin. We've already prayed. We just want to thank God for what he's doing in her body. Uh, he's doing a new thing. Restoring her body. Giving her a new body. A new thing. Lord, I thank you right now for the power of the Spirit of God. I thank you, Lord God, for the anointing. Now, Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That you're doing exceeding abundantly above all we can ask to think. And you said it was according to the power that works in us. I thank you, Lord God, for that new power, that new thing. Lord God, we're getting out of your way. Oh, Father, I thank you right now. Oh, Yabah, Kiyatah,